very interesting that um, I was planning on speaking on the baptism in the Holy Ghost this morning. <laughs> now, it might not be very interesting to you, but it's interesting to me because a lot of times we, you know, go for a while without seeing a whole lot of uh, prophetic word or, or uh, you know, God showing up in different ways and doing different things. And that is what the Holy Spirit is all about. He, he's uh, full of diversity and he'll, he'll show himself up in different ways at different times through different people. And one of the things that we have to be open and in tune for is to be used by the Holy Spirit, is to be able to flow with the Holy Spirit. It's easy, we're human beings, and we are creatures of habit. So if God does something one time, we think he's supposed to do that every time, the same way, all the time, forever. He's not like that. He's likely to turn your apple cup cart over <laughs> and you got to start all over again you know and do it differently he won't violate his word but he's not going to stick himself into our proverbial box he's going to do what he wants when he wants and that's why we need to be able to flow with him and stay at the same time within the confines of the word of God one thing that I believe we cannot allow to slip away from us is that we need to be filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit. In the middle of a situation in a time frame when hell is breaking loose in any old way, shape, or form that it can in the earth today and in the world today and in the church today, we need something and someone who's able to consistently keep us uh, and it's interesting because that's what we we're talking about. Stable and keep us on track. And we're, 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 we're continually dealing with the, the possibility of getting worldly. Now, when I say that, traditionally, when we talk about worldly, we think, oh, yeah, we're smoking, cussing, drinking, running around. That is part of the world, but worldly can get to the place where the world is more important to you and what you have to do and what you have to have and what you have to be in the world is more important than him. You know, I believe it was the Lord, but while we were, I don't even know when it was in, in, in this morning, but sometime during what was happening this morning, the Lord showed me the monkey and the cookie jar. I saw a picture of a monkey trying to get cookies out of a cookie jar. And he put his, his, his hand down into the cookie jar to bring out cookies. And he wanted them so badly that he took too many and couldn't get his hand out. And he didn't want to let go of the cookies. So you have a problem grabbed a hold of all of these cookies, needs to get his hand out, but can't without letting go some of the cookies and maybe all of them. And you know, you know what happens. Of course, he has to let go. And if someone catches him, he might not get either one because when you let him go, you have to go back and get one then, maybe. I believe that, that, that the Lord wants us to see that the church has tried so hard to get a hold of so much in the last 20, 30 years. And I'm not against prosperity. I'm not against material possessions. I believe God wants to bless his people spiritually, physically, mentally, and, and, and materially. God wants to do that. But we have to be so careful that we don't get swallowed up with stuff. 
and that our time frames don't get swallowed up with stuff. Because one thing we need to understand, even your job that keeps you sustained from day to day, where your, where your, your pay comes from and the money to put food on your table is not as important as your relationship with God. We are at, at a precipice. We're, we're at, a, at, a, at a place where you can just go right over the top, right over the edge, when, when you won't get any money. And when the money you get won't be worth anything. I think all of us are smart enough to see with what's happening in the world right now that, that what's been prophesied for years and what has been preached for years, what's been talked about for years is, is like is starting to swell and, and get bigger and bigger. And, and, and you see little ripples in, in the financial market and little waves in the financial market that are actually getting bigger. And you know the potential for a tsunami in the, in the financial market to just sweep in and take everything away is there. How many of you believe it's there? It's there. Now, I'd rather be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and have wisdom enough to be able to believe God in the middle of all that, to have sustenance and provision when nobody else can have anything, than to have $200 million in the bank. Because money in the bank, I don't know if you realize it or not. And, you know, please, 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 it's good to have, I'd like to have $200 million in the bank right now. I'd do some things and get some things that I don't have yet that I'm believing for. But, but you need to understand this. If you've got, let's just say, let's get realistic. Let's just say you had fifty thousand dollars in the bank. You really don't have any money in the bank. True in that, Angie. You got nothing there. I remember years ago, my father used to run a store, and you know, it, it, he never did go over the top because he refused to put any more than twenty percent on anything that came into the store. If he got it for nothing, he put twenty percent on that. <laughs> I was exaggerating, you know, but he only had grade three or four, and if he got a case of milk come in, he knew exactly what it would be a can just by looking at the price and adding 20%. I remember him doing that all the time, right? So, you know, he'd be on his way over, and I used to go with him in the car back then, and he'd be on his way to the bank, and there was this guy by the name, anyway, you don't need to know his name, a friend of his that he would see frequently on the way, and, and he would say to Dad, he would say, when you, because you'd go to the bank and make a deposit, right? He said, when you go, he said, he said tell them to rake mine up, you know. <laughs> make sure it's all pulled together. <laughs> you know, some such words as that, right? And I remember him saying that. I thought it was cute. It was funny. They were just carrying on, you know. But, and back then, I thought that that's true. You know, his money is in the bank. There's a whole bunch of money in there. There ain't no money there. Sure, you can go and get, like, you know, some money, but really, in comparison to what is held by the bank, there is no money there. So if the bank collapses and everybody goes for their money, you're in deep trouble. Now, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but what I want you to see is this. There is one resource. There is one source there is one bank, the bank of heaven, that when all of that collapses and when nothing is any good anymore and with, when you need a wheelbarrow full of money just to buy a loaf of bread, there is one source that if you've known and learned how to invest in that properly, God will bring your bread to you for none. When other people are trying to they're kill to get it, He'll bring a bird over your house and drop food off to you. He did it with Elijah. I'm saying all that to say this. If there's anything more important than the rest today, it is to have the Holy Ghost in your life. It is to be able to hear what God is saying for your life right now. It is to be able to hear God say yes or no. Go or don't go. And the Holy Spirit, when the baptism in the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you can hear stuff right down here that other people, it don't make you any like superhuman uh, spiritual person that you know, you're so much better than anybody else, but you have an avenue there that when you tap into it, it makes all the difference in the world.
And it, it, it's got a little bit to do with church services. But if that's all it is, you don't have very much. Hello. I said hello. Are you getting this? I mean, when we come together, one at the psalm, one at the doctrine, one at the tongue, one at the interpretation, so on and so forth. You know what it says in 1 Corinthians 14. That's, the, that's so. But, but, but Paul said, <laughs> I remember I knew this verse before I ever got filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's how I used to defend myself for not wanting to be baptized in the Holy Ghost because I didn't believe in it. I knew this verse. I don't know how I learned it. I guess somebody who didn't believe in it told me about it. And I knew that Paul said, I'd rather speak five words in my own language than 10,000 in an unknown tongue. I didn't know that. <laughs> I just thought that was, you know, against the baptism in the Holy Spirit. After I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I decided to go read it. Instead of just hear somebody tell me about it. Because I used to speak to my father-in-law and tell him, do you know the Bible says? And that's most I know it said. <laughs> A few verses from Sunday school, and I knew that, you know. But when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I found out there's a whole lot different there. And I found out that, that, that uh, being filled with the Spirit goes outside of the church, yet in the church. And I noticed that this verse was saying, I speak with tongues more than you all. I forgot that part. The Apostle Paul said, I speak with tongues more than you all. I'm, I, I'm a big tongue talker. That's what Paul was saying. But he said, yet in the church, I'd rather speak five words in my, in my native language to be understood than 10,000 in an unknown tongue. What he was saying is, listen, don't major on the gifts. Major on being anointed. Major on being effective. Major on making a difference. Major on being able to relate. Major on being able to have God show up in your life and show something big out of what you're saying and what you're doing. If it is tongues interpretation, go for it. If it is prophecy, go for it. Whatever. But he said, make sure you're making a difference. He said, so, so, so the thing is this, and I got this years ago. He said, I speak with tongues more than you all. But yet in the church... I speak with tongues more than you all, but yet in the church. So what's he saying? He said, I'm a tongue talker, but I do most of it outside the church. Is that good? We forget that sometimes. I, I, I would not want to live my life today, and I wouldn't be here today, if it wasn't for being baptized in the Holy Ghost. If God hadn't got a hold of me and got a hold of me quick and filled me with the Holy Ghost, I would not be where I am today. And, and, and I believe a lot of times when the devil comes and tries to overwhelm you and destroy you and take away from you and rob you, because you had the capacity to be able to step from our English language and go into the unknown tongue, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, it gives you the edge so that you can, you can sustain yourself and keep yourself and you can win a battle that otherwise you may not be able to win. I like what... Matthew said a few minutes ago, and good is not enough for the description of God. And you see, our words can't really describe God the way we ought to, but when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can step beyond that. I've been sometimes praying lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times praying, and I've, I've, been, I've been stuck for words. I don't know what to say, but then you realize you don't have to be stuck. You just let the Spirit of God from the inside of your being begin to flow, and it brings you right then into the presence of God. You know, like, I am not going to exhaust this subject. I'm giving you an introduction to this thing. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And trust me, if you, if, it's not all about speaking in tongues, but if you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, the potential to speak in tongues will be inside you. I believe it's possible to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and probably you haven't spoken in tongues, but you had the potential to do it. It's there. It's just not flowing. It's like the water's up to the tap, but it hasn't been fully turned on. We need to get that turned on because it's a very important part of being filled with the Spirit. Sometimes when you're weak, and, and the enemy has come in to over, overwhelm you, and you spend time just trying to beg God. Oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, God, please help me, Lord. Oh, God, I don't know if I can make another day at this. Oh, God, I'm telling you right now, step out of that, and I've done it over and over and over. 
and step into. My pristendas to corende. He jisika hasoba nevelahaya. Hey, bitty bitty kim sto humbo re. Marakifle he for some brinde ni corende ste pelabasso hu corende blemanasai. Step over. Now, you say, well, what were you saying? Really, it's not important to you. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to God. <laughs> when I speak to you, you'll know it because I'll give you the interpretation. But uh, Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, he said, you that speak it not on the tongue, speak it not on the men, but on the God. How many in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. It takes you beyond where you are and puts you where you could never be. Speaking in tongues is not just a, 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 a little thing. It gives you goosebumps. Ooh, I feel that. And sometimes you will. But if that's all there's to it, man, I'd rather dispense with all the feelings and have that connection. Because we're getting to the place where we need the connection more than we ever needed before, if that's possible. If that's possible. Sometimes when you, the weariness of life, I, I got out of the car a couple of days ago, and this week I've been, for two days I was like flat out gone, you know, like physically. I was in bed most of two days with a high fever and felt like, okay, I think I, I, think I would rather die than be dealing with this. That was a thought, that's all. But every couple of days I realized I wasn't going to die. <laughs> and I didn't, I'm here. But I went over to Dominion, parked the car, got out of it, and began to walk towards the store. And all of the heaviness, all of, all, all of the heaviness of the last two or three months even, forget about the last couple of years, but my, my, my sister-in-law died. We, we flew out to, to Calgary, we visited with Katrina for a couple of days, and we went to spend some quality time with my brother. And uh, I felt it was ministry time. I felt it was time that I could relate to him. And, and I believe that, that something very important happened in his life, an acknowledgement of the fact that he still believed, was, was important to me. Then we flew back, of course, and, and, and just like four or five weeks afterwards, we found that he died. And uh, we've been dealing with that. And, and, and I've been pushing this stupid thing off my body this week, and I got out of the car, not feeling the best at all. And, and I had one of these times. Some of you have lost a close loved one, someone in your family. You know that you can be fine. And all of a sudden, that person just comes before you. Just like that. Bang. And you're there in that mourning, grieving atmosphere again. You don't know why. Like the person just comes there. It's a human thing. It's a human thing. And you'll all deal with it if you haven't sometime or another. I've dealt with it quite a few times. Through the years with different individuals in my family. I've got a lot of family in heaven. Go and see. But I got out of the car and all of a sudden he was before me. And I thought, God, I'll never be able to call him again. So, I'm walking towards the store. This thing just drops over me. And after maybe 30 seconds or so, I begin to say, thank you, Lord. I got inside the store, and the weariness of the flesh dealing with some things, too. I got inside the store, and for some reason, I thought, you know, I should grab a loaf of bread because I'm, a lot of times you end up having to run the store for a loaf of bread. And I thought, it's only going to take me 30 seconds more. So I started walking. <laughs> this is funny. I started walking towards where the bread was. And I thought, 30 seconds. So I said, one, you know, like 1,000, two, three. I'm walking towards where the bread is. I got up to about 15, and I don't know how it changed. I honestly don't know how it happened. I got up to about 15, and I wasn't counting anymore. I was speaking in tongues. It was like, you know, 12, 13, because I was trying to do one second at a time, right? 16, 17. And when I came to myself, I was saying, I'm thinking, how did I get from counting to tongues? 
I don't know, and it really don't matter to me. You see, God wanted to enlighten my spirit. There was such a, I can't explain it. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was such a peace and a joy, and, and, and I, I actually said it loud to the Lord. I don't know if people could hear me around, but I was talking, you know, just soft. I said, God, I don't know if this is a good place for you to be doing this. Because tears were starting to come to my eyes, and I'm around people in the store. I've had it happen before, but not even as strong as this. You know, this was like, God, okay, I, we got to get. <laughs> so there was there was such a, a such a a moving from the heaviness of everything and the sorrow to God coming in and saying, Hey, 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 do you? know who I am. And I thought, God, you are so good. And the anointing of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, came up on the inside of me and overwhelmed me in the middle of the mess. That's what the Holy Ghost wants to do for us. I've had him do a lot. But that's the most recent one. <laughs> like I said, I'm giving you the introduction to, I believe we need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You may all have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Maybe you're all tongue talkers. Listen, there ought not to be a day of our lives that we don't speak in tongues. When you've got nothing else, do talk in tongues. When you don't know what to say, talk in tongues. Talk to the Lord. He that speaketh on tongues speaketh unto God. When your spirit actually is going out and mission with, with the supernatural and bringing something of God into your life for that particular season and time and, and time frame. And, and it, it, like I said before, it doesn't make you like so super spiritual above everybody else, but it gives you something that everybody needs. And the scriptures make it explicitly and abundantly clear that we're, we're, we're in need of being filled with the spirit. Jesus said to his disciples, uh, Luke 24, 49, and you see, he said, you, you stay in Jerusalem. Don't leave until you receive the promise of the Father. Can I say this? The baptism in the Holy Ghost is God's promise to the church. It's God's gift to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father, Jesus said, promised this thing that he would show forth. And, and you and I need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when I get time to go back into this, and I will, I want to preach a little bit about it again. We need to stir it up in ourselves and remind you that there's a difference to being saved and having the Spirit of God come on the inside of you and recreate you to being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And God wants us to step from one point to the other. Until the glory of God. You see, listen to me closely. There's some stuff happening in the earth right now that, that I believe people are going to need the anointing of the Spirit of God inside in an overwhelming way to help you be strong enough not to be overwhelmed and overtaken with it. It's getting to the place where you're going to need to be able to stand up and say, this is who I am, this is what I believe, and I'll die for that. I was just looking at, at a a news from a CBC, I think it was CBC News clip from Calgary. They painted one of their transit buses, the rainbow colors, and, and written on it, Ride with Pride. Now, I love homosexuals. I got homosexual friends. You understand that? I got friends that are homosexual. I can sit down, I go have coffee with them. No problem. Not a problem. I am not homophobic. Get over it. But I don't agree with it. You get that? It's sin. And we're not going to celebrate sin, whether it's homosexuality or adultery or fornication or anything else. If you're celebrating any kind of sin, you're wrong. Get over it and get on with your walk with God. You, you all agree with me? Now, this young fellow that's driving the bus, he says, I can't drive this bus. And he's being challenged. He could lose his job. Because he don't want to drive the rainbow bus. Would you drive a rainbow bus that says ride with pride? Listen, do me, do me a favor. Start studying the scriptures. And find out what God says about the proud. 
It's scary. I said it's scary. You remember, you remember a few mornings ago, a few weeks ago then, I mentioned to you Malachi 3.15, where God said, you call the proud happy? Guess what's written on the front of this bus? Up top. Happy pride. They changed the word gay to happy because that's what it used to mean. They got it written there actually again. Happy pride. I mean, when I looked at it, I, my mouth fell open again. Wow. This is back in the Old Testament. God said, you've called the proud happy. This is not just like an accidental coincidental thing happening here. Hell is rising up and mocking the church and mocking the Word of God and mocking what we believe. And don't matter what sin it is. Listen, please. They've made homosexuality something that we're supposed to take and, and we're supposed to swallow it down and we're supposed to celebrate it. We don't celebrate stealing. We don't celebrate pedophilia. We don't celebrate adultery. We don't celebrate lying. We don't celebrate gossiping. Why should we celebrate any other sin? You can love people, but you don't have to agree with them. But I said all that to say this. We're getting to the place where you're going to need something on the inside to, to, to help you know that even though something may look like it's okay, it's not okay. You need the, 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 the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. You need the wisdom of the, the anointing. The Holy Ghost on the inside of you to, to differentiate between all this stuff. Because you're going to be pressured and peer pressured into, try, into, into accepting things that don't belong to the church, don't belong to, to mankind, and certainly doesn't belong to you as a believer. So, if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, you will probably be full of something else. You get that? Pride. We love. And we're proud of how we love. And they don't even know what love is. Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, do what I say. So until you know you love God and you're going to follow the word, you have no idea what love is. You see, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to have God showing up. He's going to be telling you what to do, what not do, what to say, what not to say, what to receive, what not to receive. And you're going to find that He's going to shake your world. And it's going to have... Listen, I'm closing with this. If you think you're going to get out of this thing without people hating you, you're wrong. They hated Jesus they crucified him, and when he spoke the truth, they, they'd even kick him out of the church and drag him to the, the, the brow of the hill to throw him over because he told the truth. And the church that stands up and speaks the truth today will be ostracized, will be criticized, will be lambasted, and they will be killed in some cases. And Jesus himself said, Matthew 16, 1, he said, they will put you out of the synagogue, and he that killeth you will think he does God a favor. And it's happening today. And Jesus said that. I want, I want that understanding, that knowing inside me. I want to be able to stand up and be willing to die for what I believe. Can I ask you a question? What do you believe? What do you believe? What do you really believe? Are you just a churchgoer, or do you believe something? Because if what we believe from this Bible is not worth dying for, then we really don't know if anything we believe is any, of any importance. We need to know where we stand. We need to know what we believe. And we need to take our stand by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
It was the Holy Spirit within the lives of believers who caused them to be crucified upside down, to be stoned, to be sent out of town and beaten. Paul, I mean, he was shipwrecked three times and, and let that over a wall in a basket to, 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 to spare his life and, and stoned and left for dead. And I mean, it was like ongoing because he told the truth. And the church today has been rocked to sleep thinking we'll just make our message palatable so that everybody loves us and everybody thinks this is good. Well, we've kind of like diverted from what it was when this thing started, haven't we not? When the baptism in the Holy Spirit is released in your life, your hunger and your thirst for truth will intensify. Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will lead you into all truth. Truth does not come from CBC or NTV. It doesn't come from Hollywood. And it doesn't come from the university. Truth doesn't come from any of these areas. There may be some worldly wisdom that you can see and some stories that you may be able to verify. But real truth comes from Jesus Christ, from the Holy Spirit. And that's where the bottom line must be with those of us who love God. Bottom line, what does God say? Bottom line, do we have the witness of the Spirit on the inside of us. If you're baptized in the Holy Ghost this morning, don't let it get cold. Don't get slack. Don't let days go by without you entering into the presence of God and speaking with other tongues and magnifying God. You notice the Bible says they spoke with tongues and magnified God. See, they... <laughs> When you, when, when, you, when you speak with, with tongues to glorify and magnify God, you go beyond God's good. Because in your English language, what can you say? God's good. God's awesome. God. But when you get into the realm of the Spirit, you start speaking words about God that only heaven can give you. Amen? Barry heads with me. I could go on with my little introduction, but I'm going to stop there. Father, we just, we just pray that the anointing of the Spirit of God would be on us right now. In the name of Jesus, we're not satisfied with status quo. We want to go beyond where we've been. We're not satisfied with what we've experienced with the anointing and with the Holy Spirit, but we want to go beyond that. And I pray right now in Jesus' name thank you Lord there's some there's a couple or three people in this place this morning and you you you've been feeling called to the ministry and the the enemy has pushed against you and and has, has challenged you and made you feel that 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 you've missed it and that you know you might as well just throw that out and forget about it. Just shut yourself in with God because this is this is so. And uh, you you need you need to do an about turn and say, God, I receive that calling. And you don't have to make it happen, but God will open doors and He will make a way for that calling to be effective and that calling to 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 make its its appearance at, at the, the proper and right time. The important thing is to say, God, thank you for calling me to some kind of ministry. I, I submit myself right now in Jesus' name. And, and I, I thank you. I'm available. I'm available to you. You need to say that. You need to say that to God. And you see, once you make yourself available because you know you've been called, then the ball's in his court. But I'm telling you, you're here this morning, you need to say that. God, I'm available. Then go about your business and stay available. 
You hear what I'm saying? Write it down because you're going to need it. Once you've said, yes, Lord, I'm available. I receive that call from you, and I will always be available to you. And God will put you where he wants you when he's ready as long as you stay available and willing. Just thank God for that right now. Just thank the Lord for it. We've got to stay open to the Holy Spirit. I've had a bunch of people asking, so when are you retiring? It's funny because when I start thinking about retiring, I start thinking about greater things. It's like it just pops up all the time. Isn't that interesting? So I kind of figure instead of retirement, I'm heading for phase two. I believe that. Because this thing pops out of my spirit. But we need to understand something else. All we've got to do is be available and obedient. God will take care of the rest. Anything that you fabricate yourself and you make happen yourself is going to just... Have you ever tried to push a car with no engine going? I have too. Years ago, we used to do it a lot. They go better today. When I was 17 years old, I had a 62 Envoy. Not like the ones they make today. It was, it was, it was a cousin to the Vauxhall, a sister to the Vauxhall Envoy. And every now and then, you'd have to push it. It was a standard. You push it for a while. And once the engine could go, man, you'd go. I'm telling you, if you're pushing your walk, your anointing, your calling, if you're pushing... You're going to find out that as soon as you run out of energy, as soon as you, fu- you run out of, out of strength, it's just going to stop right with you. But if you can let the anointing of God flow and be willing and flow with him, you can just get in that thing and drive. And you don't have to worry about anybody. It's not somebody else's business. It's yours and God's. So I'm telling you, the calling is there. Get ready. However big or small it is, be willing, and the willingness will give you your reward. Amen. Amen, Now we'll get back to praying because that's what I was doing when the Lord gave me that word. Father, we just thank you that the grace of God is big in this place. The anointing is big in this place. The glory is in the house. And we're not satisfied where where, where, where things are. We're, we're, We're in agreement this morning that we're heading to greater things. And, and we're asking that you give us wisdom and understanding to know what to do and, and which way to go and how to do it. We, we ask for that and we intentionally, willfully make ourselves available to you and to the gospel. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom be established inside of us and in our midst. And then let your will be done for the glory of God. We rebuke the work of darkness. Satan, you're a liar. You have nothing and can do nothing. You have no partner lot in this matter. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you and claim the blood against you for every soul in this house and those that are affiliated with this house. We join our faith together and rebuke you in Jesus' name. And Father, we invite your angels to be released in households here, in families here, in this church, and in situations And we pray that you give us grace and strength to do what we must do and to do it the way we must do it for your glory. I pray for those, Lord, that may be watching online at this moment. I pray that the the anointing that that I believe is in this house today would, would change some things in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we believe that this thing is turning around for the glory of God. Change is coming. Miracles, signs, and wonders by the will of God and according to the Spirit of God are being released from heaven. And we thank you for the privilege of being able to say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Listen, I don't know if you know it or not, but there's a lot of pastors, not just local pastors, but international pastors that are being attacked in, in big ways 
stuff you know you may not even be totally aware of and uh, they're going through some of the same things that you and I may be dealing with and uh, I don't I don't want to magnify anything the devil's doing but I want to remind you you need to pray for for international people that are that are willing to get out there and say that God is good and declare his goodness in the land and his truth and his integrity in the land pray for them Pray that the anointing be strong and that they be protected and covered with the blood of Jesus so that, so that we can see the word of God continue to go throughout the land and throughout the earth for the glory of God. Amen? We're believing for that. Let's stand together.